uh, we're about to start. Good. Quiet, please. Welcome to today's New Jersey City Council hybrid hearing of the Committee on Finance. To minimize disruption, please, everyone, place all electronic devices to vibrate or silent mode. If you wish to submit testimony, you may send it to testimony at council.nyc.gov. Again, that's testimony at council.nyc.gov. Thank you for your cooperation. Chair Brandon, we are ready to begin. Good morning and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. I'm Council Member Justin Brandon. I have the privilege of chairing the Council's Committee on Finance. Uh, today we've been joined by Council Members Osei, Kagan, Hanks, Lewis, and Juan. Uh, today the committee will be hearing and voting on three items. <clears throat> a bid-related introduction, an Article 11 tax exemption, and a transparency resolution. First, Intro 789 would authorize two bids, business improvement districts, to increase the amounts they expend annually as follows. 125th Street bid to $1,687,028, and the Dumbo bid to $2.5 million. Council previously approved Resolution 362 on November 3rd, setting today as a date for a public hearing on this legislation. The budget increases, the budget increases have been requested by the property owners within the boundaries of each bid and would be used to enhance the services provided. The details about which bids would see increases and the amounts sought are set forth, set forth in the briefing documents prepared by the finance staff. To adopt this, we must first make sure that proper notice was given and that the increase in annual amounts to be expended are in the public interest and that the tax and debt limits prescribed in the law will not be exceeded. Pre-considered Resolution 398 would authorize an Article 11 property tax exemption for 12 buildings with 251 units in Councilmember Gutierrez District. This tax exemption will allow the buildings to refinance existing debt pay off existing arrears, conduct a rehabilitation scope, and remain operationally sound. Finally, the transparency resolution sets forth the new designation and changes in the designation of certain organizations receiving local aging anti-poverty and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. As with all transparency resolutions, council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict of interest exists with any of the groups on the attached list. If any council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please disclose any conflicts you may have with proposed subcontractors used by organizations sponsored by council discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. Disclosure forms must be completed and submitted prior to the vote on the transparency resolution that may be emailed to Julius Caranda, who is also present today in chambers to answer your questions. Uh, Deputy Commissioner Calvin Brown from the Department of Small Business Services is here to testify regarding the requested assessment increases and representatives from the two bids are here to answer any council member questions. We've also been joined by council members Ayala, Brewer, Powers, and Barron. Uh, and we'll hear from Deputy Commissioner Brown now after he is sworn in by council. Good morning. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this committee and respond honestly to council member questions, Deputy Commissioner? I do. Thank you, please proceed. Good morning, Chair Brennan and the Finance Committee. I am Calvin T. Brown, the Deputy Commissioner for Neighborhood Development at the Department for Small Business Services, and I'm joined by my colleagues Emily Edward and Leslie Velasquez, members of the Business Improvement Team at the agency. I wish to express my support for the law providing an increase in the amount to be expended in two business improvement districts or bids. At SBS, we are working hard to open the doors for New Yorkers across the five boroughs, focusing on creating stronger businesses connecting New Yorkers to good jobs and fostering thriving neighborhoods. We oversee and support the city network of bids and groups who wish to form new bids in their communities. We believe bids are central to these efforts as valuable and proven partners in fostering the vitality of the city's neighborhoods and commercial districts. Throughout the pandemic and recovery, bids have called, been called upon to deliver an increased level of services and support to small business in their neighborhoods. The mayor's economic blueprint for places 
also places the bids in front and center in several initiatives to rebuild and reinvent our commercial corridors and central business districts. In order to respond to these new challenges and opportunities, every single bid has been evaluating their budgets for savings and cost efficiencies. Part of our role in overseeing and supporting the city's existing network of 76 bids includes guiding them through the legislative processes, including increases to their assessment cap. To propose an increased assessment, bids must complete a multi-level review process overseen by SBS. The bid board of directors, which include property owners, merchants, residents, as well as representatives from the city controllers, borough president, city council, and SBS must review and approve the proposed assessment increase. Additionally, SBS requires all bids to submit a five-part justification outlining how the increase will be allocated, minutes from the board meeting when the increase was approved, and letters of support by all city council members representing the bid boundary. SBS then reviews these justifications and determine whether they are sufficient to bring to city council. As required by law, each of the two bids publish a notice of this public hearing at least once in a local newspaper having general circulation in the district specifying the time and place of today's hearing and stating the proposed amount to be expended annually. It is a priority of SBS that assessment increases proposal focus on enhancing programs and services provided to the district. The two bids proposing assessment increases are doing so to address vital needs and changing conditions on the ground. The increases will further expand, reinforce, and strengthen existing core services currently provided in the districts and include funds for streetscape improvement, open street programming, new public events, and added staff capacity. Additionally, portions of these increases will be used to sustain or increase current levels of sanitation and public safety programs and services impacting the rising costs related to inflation. The proposed increases vary according to the budget size, district size, and the proposed changes in programs and services. The proposed increases are 125th Street from $1,240,462 to $1,687,028. Dumbo, $1,250,000 to $2,500,000. The city's 76 bids invest over 160 million into neighborhood economies in the form of supplemental services and programs that serve nearly 25,000 ground floor businesses across the city. In partnership with the city government, bids help spur job creation, improve the quality of life for New Yorkers and visitors, enhance the city tax base, and strengthen the local economy. Representatives from each of the bids requesting an assessment increase are present to answer any questions pertaining to their specific request. However, I'm also happy to answer any questions that the council may have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. We've also been joined by council members Fradius, Ressler, Carr, Brooks Powers, and we have council members Sanchez and Moya on Zoom. Do we have any questions for the commissioner? Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have um, Lindsay Stewart from Dumbo Bid, Jackie Florsheim, Dumbo Bid, and Henry Florsheim, Dumbo Bid. Okay, whoever wants to go first. So I don't know if that's on. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lindsay Stewart. I am a resident and business owner in Dumbo. The Dumbo bid plays an important role for my business, helping us promote, stand by, standing by us through the pandemic, holding Zooms with loan specialists, adopting at every turn keeping people out on the street, cleaning when we were the most afraid of everyone's health and giving people safe events to come together and bring back the people to the neighborhood. Did you know that we have 90 plus small businesses still in Dumbo? Only two or three closed during the pandemic. 
That is amazing, and I credit the work of the bid. We are not out of the woods of recovery. Maybe we never will be. Dumbo is a mixed-use neighborhood, offices and residents, arts and culture, and yes, tourism brings everyone to Brooklyn that helps lift up the whole borough. The hybrid work model means less customers during the week. It means we need more visitors, even more. Trash seems to be increasing with the visitor crowds and we definitely need more resources to keep the neighborhood shining. Having a well-funded bid for the neighborhood that welcomes everyone to Brooklyn is a no-brainer. I support Alexandra and her team. Good morning, all. I'm Jackie, and Henry and I have been living in Dumbo for over 15 years. And one of the things that it attracted us to Dumbo was the arts community, many of whom have lived in Dumbo far longer than we have. Really, we would call them pioneers. Along with them, we love all of the Dumbo bids work whether it's free concerts and art shows in the Archway, the Brooklyn Flea, Dumbo Drop to raise money for our local schools, children's activities, and so much more. We definitely support the bid getting the funding it needs to keep things going. As Lindsay said, they kept things going during the pandemic and we need them more than ever. We love sharing Dumbo, right, Henry? We sure do. Hi, I'm Henry. We love seeing all the tourists from other boroughs, states, and countries. It's a melting pot. It's so good that everyone, not only local residents, can enjoy this special place. Dumbo was planned as a destination with the waterfront parks, ferries, Brooklyn and Manhattan bridges, now a new library, the carousel, and many, many weddings in the park. Visitors to Dumbo keep our local business going. Restaurants like Superfine and shops like Glam and Taya Grant. And we do love giving directions to our visitors to the neighborhood, just as we expect it when we go to other neighborhoods. So, we think it's like having the best of New York right in our Love neighborhood. Backyard. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now we have uh, Daniel Meyer or Maya. Chair Brandon Maya. Can I say? Can I just thank the panelists from our, from our community? Yeah. Go ahead. I just want to thank the panelists, especially my former teacher, Jackie, for everything that she does. Um, she's the best. So thank you for everything you do and for everything you've done for so many years for, for people in our community. Thanks, Justin. Lincoln Wrestler, this is your life. <laughs> okay, we have next up Daniel Meyer or Maya. I'm sorry, I can't read your handwriting. Suzanne Quint. Craig Anthony Miller. You guys here? So Suzanne Quint, Daniel Meyer, and Craig Anthony Miller. And last one, uh, Thea Grant. Come on up. You want to just go yeah, left to right? Fine. Sure. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Suzanne Quint. I'm a Dumbo resident for 10 years. Um, I actually just came off of the community board serving there and I'm on the steering committee for our new-ish and burgeoning um, neighborhood group, Dumbo Action Committee. Um, I wanted to just start in response to the gentleman from Small Business Services who said that the bids needed to present sort of a detailed five-point plan is what I heard in terms of the increase in expenses and that's really the nature of my concern. Not that I, I, I'm sure, as a business person, there are needs and inflationary expenses that need to be accounted for, but I am very concerned about how this sizable increase is spent. Um, and 
um, it wasn't available to me um, to see what those, um, how the money would be spent. Um, so let me just say, um, I'd like to start just by saying um, I want to paint a picture of the neighborhood, which may be different than what you see. Um, those who visit Dumbo, they see tourism, they see the, the tech triangle, but Dumbo is first and foremost today a residential neighborhood. In the last uh, census, we had a 68% increase in residents. It's the second highest increase in residents in all of New York City. And today, there are more residents than office workers um, in Dumbo, and that really changes the complexion and the priorities and the need. The Dumbo bid, um, which does and has done good work, um, is a powerhouse. Uh, in the years where the residential population was smaller and less organized, uh, they became the de facto voice, not for a street, not for an area, but for the entire neighborhood. With this proposed substantial increase in budget, we do need the residential voice to be heard. With today's budget, uh, the Dumbo bid spends, by my calculation, 50% on programming and promotion. This is largely for events, in our view, used to drive more tourism and thus more congestion. And anyone who has spent time in Dumbo on a warm weekend knows how congested it is. We are extremely concerned that more budget equals more programming and promotion, which equals more tourism and more congestion, which is no way has been met with adequate support from city agencies and services. Um, I wanna go on record on three things on behalf of residents. Residents are extremely concerned that more dollars through this increase go to programming and promotion, which are done without consultation and sometimes regard for the residents of the neighborhood. Residents would like a substantial portion of the increase to go to things like traffic enforcement in the neighborhood. Residents also asked the Dumbo bid to allocate a few seats on its board, um, the few seats on its board which are filled by residents um, to be purely residents. There are two residential representatives on the board today which also have business interests in the neighborhood. And we feel it's important to have the voice of the many, many residents um, to be heard in some way um, on the board. Thank you. There's no one on the board right now who's just a resident? Just a resident? No. There's a, the two residential representatives. One is a business owner as well, and one works in commercial real estate and actually was, uh, in the most recent ULERP, represented the, um, the real estate developer. Go ahead. Hey, good morning. My name is Dan Meek. Um, nice to meet you all. Uh, I've been a seven-year resident in Dumbo. Um, I am here in testimony against the bid increase, um, primarily sharing Suzanne's concerns around transparency and oversight. Um, number one, how have the tenants in the buildings been notified that there will be an increase? Um, in addition, Dumbo has a unique opportunity that we host a weekly event that the Dumbo also receives funding for as well as events throughout the year up to twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year in which they can <coughs> gather funds so i have concerns about the transparency and accountability around how they're actually fundraising and how they're spending that fundraising um, they also have access to two public spaces in addition to open street that they do for pr primarily private programming throughout the year um, and unfortunately have not been receptive to residents concerns um, I believe this committee is here to ensure there's accountability and prudent financial decisions. Um, I wouldn't go in front of another board and ask for a million dollar increase without transparency on how that will be spent when the leader of the executive team has paid over $200,000 in addition to accumulating um, funds through private events. Um, so I have concerns and wanted to um, voice my concerns that there should not be an increase for the bid um, in Dumbo. Thank you. Is this the active one? Does it matter which one? No. Okay. <clears throat> Great. Hi, good morning. My name is Taya Grant. Um, I represent myself and my business partner. We have a small business in Dumbo. I myself am a native uh, Brooklyn Heights uh, resident, born and raised, now raising my children here in Brooklyn. We've owned a business in Dumbo since 2007 and have had a retail store since 2017 in Dumbo. 
Um, Dumbo has experienced a renaissance in my lifetime and has evolved from an abandoned and savage cityscape to a refined, landscaped, manicured, and highly sought after destination, both for New York residences and their visitors. Dumbo is a destination. There's no doubt about it, a destination which became uh, a Depression-era dust bowl during the pandemic, emptying out and losing a majority of its denizens, uh, the tourists, the local daily workforce, anybody on the streets. Um, that was devastating for those of us who were the small businesses, uh, creative businesses. I should have mentioned that we own a jewelry store um, that carries a variety of antique and vintage curiosities and other small artists are represented there. There was a beacon among the chaos, um, our local bid, which has always been for us a small but extremely stellar, creative and productive team, which leads programming of all kinds, both for children, for artists, for visitors, for locals, and has provided platforms and supported um, the people of the neighborhood in our, in our opinion. Um, the artists being something that's really important to us, the original pioneers in our neighborhood. Dumbo is historically a Victorian 19th century neighborhood. Uh, it has not ever seen the increase of the people, the new residents that are coming in. Um, there is a huge amount of tourism and uh, we do have concerns having seen this change happen that those changes be reflected in, in how the neighborhood is being organized and managed. Uh, I do believe the bid is the, the organization for the job. They have shown us that they really do keep in mind all of the interests in the neighborhood. Whenever somebody comes into our store and says, we're new to the neighborhood, what can you tell us? We say, well, you should really sign up for the bid's email. You should really take one of their maps. You should really get to know your neighborhood. This is a group that will help you find out what's going on, what uh, opportunities are available. Um, and you can get very involved or you can just uh, come and see the performances that they help to put on. Um, all in all, that's what I wanna leave you with is that my impression is that the bid brings us all together. Um, it supports and breathes life into the community, which is why we remain in Dumbo and will continue to stay in Dumbo as a small business because we really believe that what they're doing is supporting all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, wow. My name is Craig Anthony Miller, and I'm here to speak on behalf of most if not all the artists that are in Dumbo today. I started in Dumbo so long ago. I, I've probably been here for 19 years now or something like that. And I have to say that um, when I first got here, there was not too much going on as far as like um, how the artists was getting by, how the artists were surviving. And until the bid had started to, uh, you know, started marketing and keeping the arts within the community, things have gotten so much better. I mean, to be honest, the Dumbo community, the bedrock of the Dumbo community is the art community. This, is, has, this has been the case since the, the 70s and so much to the point that the name Dumbo itself was coined by the artists. And, you know, yes, the neighborhood has grown, it has, uh, gotten to the point where everybody wants to be a part of this community. It is a destination place. We have tourists coming in from everywhere, not just to see a bridge, but to see, you know, the livelihood of this community. And, um, you know, it's one of the things that I was most concerned with was what was going to happen to the creative side, what was going to happen to the artists. And you know the bid has gone well above and beyond at making sure that there are programs every single month that keeps the artists uh, engaged with the community, keeps the small businesses engaged with the artists, and so on. Um, there's not a month that goes by where you won't find something like something happening for the community uh, where everybody can participate. Um, this, this past summer was a big event for us at the 60 Collective, and you know, Washington Street is probably the hub of where uh, the you know, tourists come to hang out, and you know, this bid stepped up in so many different ways to make sure that most of those tourists 
did stick around and support the small communities, uh, the small businesses and the artists there. So, you know, um, I get the concern of, you know, having too many people there, but I think that most people come to this community because of how popular it is. It's a beautiful space. And I think that the bid is, uh, you know, just doing everything in, in concern for everyone in the neighborhood. I say that, uh, you know, there's not enough uh, uh, that they can do. Like this, I mean, the money is important. Um, I think with the increase, we'll be able to just uh, manage so many more things and, you know, keep, keep the community relevant uh, to so many other different communities within the neighborhood, uh, within Brooklyn alone, I'm sorry. Um, wanna, I just wanna point out just uh, a couple more things. Um, Tourists come to New York City uh, really to see the vibrancy of the art programs, okay? Um, Bushwick has been a community that has uh, been very well known for their murals. Uh, Dumbo is catching up so fast. We have a small space, but there's not one block that you could walk by and, and not really be mesmerized by the art in that community. And I think that as long as the artists stay relevant and thriving, I think the community will continue to grow and everybody will have a space there. You know, um, um, I, I could keep going on, but I know we don't have too much time. Um, I'm in uh, support to, to, for, the, for the budget increase. And I think that with that money, there will be the next 25, 30 years of, of uh, funding and programs. Um, things like live in the archway, uh, holding classes over the summer for to teach people uh, workshops and doing fundraisers for the local schools. Uh, the bid is very instrumental in all of this and um, I appreciate them so much and I hope you uh, go ahead and allow this increase. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, now we have uh, Lana Grant, Cynthia McKnight, uh, Elaine or Eleanor Alpi, and Richard Moore or Muri. That's it. Uh, we've also been joined by council members Velasquez and Hudson. You, you could begin if you like. Good morning, City Council. My name is Cynthia McKnight, President of Community Education Council 13 and former PTA President of the Dock Street School in Dumbo, a public Title I middle school. It is apropos that I'm speaking this week of Thanksgiving in support of the Dumbo Improvement District increase. The Dock Street School opened in September 2016 with over 90% of the students from very low income families. We were a school in a new building without basic equipment such as printing paper, calculators, enrichment programs, and activities for our school dependent students. The, Stock, the Dock Street School is thankful that the Dumbo Improvement District came to our rescue and partnered with us to create the Dumbo Drop, an epic block party fundraiser that provides much needed funding to the Dock Street School and PS307, another local Title I elementary school. This event also attracted tourists who donated to the, um, this um, fun event. The money allowed us to address the equity issues in black and brown schools. Contrary to what people think, your tax dollars which fund public education are not enough to give our students everything that they need. The Dock Street School is also grateful for the amazing art opportunities that the Dumbo Improvement District connected us to. Our students were able to work with talented artists and do art projects with artists who look like them. Our school trips to black and women owned art studios in Dumbo were very impactful. Words cannot express how thankful the Dock Street community is to the Dumbo Improvement District when in 2020, COVID devastated our already vulnerable population. Many of our families did not have food to eat on the weekends when there were no school meals available. Once again, the Dumbo Improvement District came to our rescue and started a program of organizing the Dumbo community to purchase meals that tremendously helped Dock Street and 307 families and the local Dumbo residents, uh, restaurants. 
I can go on and on about the Dumbo companies that the Dumbo Improvement District connected us to that expose our students to technology, design thinking, architecture, et cetera, and I know this has positively changed the trajectory of our students' lives. This is why I urge you to support the Dumbo Improvement increase. Um, I just wanted to share that I see Council Member Charles Barron. I grew up in East New York, Linden Houses, Lincoln Wrestler, and, and Council Member. The work that the Dumbo community, it impacts your area as well. I have personally delivered food and resources, clothing to churches and schools in your district. And of course, Lincoln Wrestler is a big supporter, and even in Bed Stuy, um, District 13 impacts all the way from Bed-Stuy, all the way to Dumbo. But as I say, we have many people who live in East New York and Brownsville. And so thank you and have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. We won't let your friendship with Charles Barron affect the uh, decision today. <laughs> but please continue. <laughs> thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Land Grant. Trust me, it's true. <laughs> I'm not really engaged in real estate except for the real estate of cyberspace. I live in, in Dumbo on Washington Street, kind of the core or the main, main drag of our neighborhood. I've been in the neighborhood for now about 13 years. Prior to that, 27 years in Brooklyn Heights, so I know this area very, very well. On top of that, I've done a number of, of projects for for the, uh, the uh, uh, various economic development organizations of our fair borough of, of Dumbo, I'm sorry, of Brooklyn. I'll try it one more time. Of, well, let's just say Brooklyn. Um, it, as a result, such programs as, uh, as Dumbo, or rather Brooklyn Goes Global, is a program that I helped start uh, some now 30 years ago and it, it's lasted at least 20 years and probably is still going. Uh, I come from the, the world of tech via Apple, which is a company I've worked for for the last five years. I'm not here to represent them, but I am here to state that uh, tech is a major factor uh, in, in the world of, of Brooklyn, specifically the tech triangle, which, of which uh, our, our bid is a member. Uh, so uh, I, I, I speak to the biggest success in the local area, which is a, c a company uh, that started the world of 3D printing uh, on, a, on a scale for individuals. Uh, that was MakerBot, uh, which is just up the hill uh, in downtown uh, Brooklyn. And I think that uh, that's an example of uh, a fabulous tech uh, building block that we could do more of in the bid. Uh, and I think uh, that's, that's an area that needs additional support. Uh, and the funds that are, that are available to the bid, I think will find some usage in that area as well. I uh, work uh, directly with people who come to the city in terms of destination interests. Uh, I'm a sales specialist uh, in, in the, uh, in the uh, Oculus, two blocks south of here in the World Trade Center. And we see a great number of individuals from all over the world coming to New York. My, my uh, inter interface with them has to do with uh, telling them about not just our products, but what the, the world of New York is all about. They're often looking for destinations, and the one they already know about is Dumbo. They tell me about Dumbo, and I try my best to reinforce how important Dumbo is. Uh, I actually commute by foot over the Brooklyn Bridge, both directions every day, to get to my job. Uh, and that's one of the places where uh, tourists are going. Uh, I would say 50% of what we see at my, my local business, if you can call Apple local, uh, is, is tourism. Much of it is national tourism, but a lot of it is international tourism. So we're introducing uh, Brooklyn and, and the, the Dumbo residents to a whole new type of influence uh, all of which uh, bespeaks well for, for our city and for our local neighborhood. So I think that there are uh, various ways to, to uh, increase what we're already about. Destination is the name of the game. People are eager to be uh, involved in things that are vibrant, alive, 
uh, and look like uh, everybody is having a good time. And generally speaking, when you come to Dumbo, you do have a good time. So I'm very much in favor of, of our bid. Thank you. And what they're about. Thank you. Thank you. We still have folks on Zoom who are going to testify, so we've got to keep everyone to a two-minute clock. Go ahead. Uh, good uh, morning, I think. It is just still morning. Good morning. Uh, I feel like Methuselah here. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've lived and worked in Dumbo for 50 years. I was one of the, actually the first person to uh, have a loft there and a business. I had a factory on Pearl Street, uh, which I designed and manufactured my own furniture, distributed it to the major department stores, Macy's, Gimbel's, Bloomingdale's, Gilchrist, uh, you name it, I was selling my products, uh, as well as having my own retail stores throughout New York City. Uh, I went from there to other things, but basically, uh, I, I'm a, I'm, I've been in Dumbo, a lot. I helped name Dumbo uh, at the meeting when we had our, uh, uh, the BLT, the uh, Brooklyn Loft Tenants uh, Group, that's what we called ourselves, and uh, uh, Things have changed in, in 50 years, I'll tell you. It's, it's, gotten, uh, it's gotten really, uh, really dynamic. Um, yes, there's an art community. The art community developed Dumbo. There's no doubt about that. Uh, in the 70s, we, we had open studios where I think the New York Times recorded one year we had over 100,000 visitors came to walk through Dumbo before residents before there were people, these were just artists who'd taken over loft spaces like myself. Uh, thank goodness I was able to buy my space. I've been in the same space for 50 years, and it looks like it, uh, as some people can contest. Uh, my artwork has been published around the world. Uh, I've done sculptures of furniture using various different things, the New York Times, the London Times, uh, Japanese magazines, uh, uh, design, the fair. Um, all out of Dumbo. This all comes out of Dumbo. That's where I work. This is where I live. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a special place for me, especially. Um, what else can I say other than right now in terms of my credentials? As, uh, um, I am the uh, community partner for the 8-4 precinct for Sector B, which is our boy, which is Dumbo, Farragut Housing, Old Fulton Street. I'm also the uh, PBBN's community representative for Brooklyn Bridge Park. Uh, I also am the uh, captain for the stewardship programs for the Parks Department. I prune all the trees in Dumbo and North Heights, Vinegar Hill, and Farragut Housing on the street trees. I'm the guy who goes around pruning them. Um, what else? Uh, there's so many other things that I do, but let's just start there. I, I, I have to say I support the bid very strongly. It's been years. I mean, uh, what, they, what they started out, it's a struggle figuring out what was right and what was wrong. Uh, everyone makes mistakes. They have corrected their mistakes. I think what uh, Suzanne said about having more representation of uh, uh, people who are um, in the community that live there, the residents, is essential because uh, there are complaints that are justifiable. And uh, uh, again, when they're made, the bid works very hard to correct those mistakes, which is, which is what it's all about. Uh, I am a businessman. I was the president of the Fulton Ferry Business Association. Um, uh, I went around and spoke to many of the businesses now. They're still 30% below uh, pre-pandemic levels, so they're struggling. Uh, uh, they all support the bid. Most of them, at least 99% of them do in terms of the foot traffic. Uh, we have to be honest also. The tourists come to Dumbo for one reason, and that's this. This is what they want to see. This is where they are. This is why the tourists come to Dumbo. And the businesses have to keep them there. That's their objective. And the bid helps in keeping those people there by having their certain activities, which is important and it works. Thank you. So um, I don't want to keep going on and on, but basically I do support the bid. Um, I think what they've done during the pandemic was monumental and what they're continuing to do is important. And so I hope that um, um, th their, their proposal is uh, accepted. Thank you. Thank you. One, one moment. Okay, go ahead, you have two minutes. Uh we should have given I'm Eleanor Alper as my legal name, my married name. Um, I am Eleanor Kupenko as an artist. If you've been to Dumbo, you may have seen my 
my fun seats, their benches, and they're not all there now because of the pandemic. They had to make room for the food sheds. Anyway, I support Dumbo because for many, many years, I, before my husband passed away, I lived in the West Village at 2 Fifth Avenue, right on the arch, a tourist destination full of people from all over the world. I like to live where other people want to go. As an artist, I want to uh, experience other cultures, and I know other cultures want to come here. Dumbo is an amazing destination, and it's, uh, but I want to speak mainly about being a grandmother and the joy it gives me to go to uh, see all of the events that are under the archway, to see every Thursday night in summer, 50 or 60 toddlers dancing to the bands, people getting together to just be neighbors. Dumbo is a community of families, and I think the bid has done more to keep us that way. And uh, if there's any time left, you should hear more from Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now we have Magdalena Levy. Thank you all. Magdalena, you have two minutes. Um, thank you. Uh, well, um, this is not very easy for me, but um, I'm going to be quick. Um, I'm here as a resident and as a small business owner. I have been um, very uh, vocal regarding traffic chaos in Dumbo, and um, it's, uh, it's a big problem, and um, it's definitely a big problem for my business. I have a flower shop, and um, it's just um, not working for me. Um, I just feel that... Um, the, the program, the current program, Open Streets, works great um, in, in other na bigger neighborhoods, but not in Dumbo. It seems that the current situation right now, more it, it's given more importance to tourists than to the needs of residents. And I feel that the bid doesn't really listen to the needs of residents. So I'm talking here as a resident, as a business owner. Uh, and again, my, my big concern is that the more budget the more programming will be created and um, will lure more people in, more traffic and more chaos. For us, uh, in order to deliver uh, flowers, even four, five blocks in the neighborhood can take easily 40 minutes. And this is basically a result of having a main street closed in Dumbo, Washington Street, which is um, organized by Dumblebit and by the um, Department of, of Transportation. Um, I just don't understand why Washington Street has to be controlled by Dumblebid when they also have control of the arch and soon they will have control of um, Anchorage Street. So I just hope that once Anchorage Street is open, why can't we have Washington Street back? Um, and basically, that's it. I mean, my, my main concern is that I just want traffic to uh, <laughs> just be less chaotic for my business. Otherwise, I will, I will have to move. If this coming summer things continue the way they are, I will have to move my flower shop out of Dumbo. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have Michael Anako or Ianako. Good morning. Thank you all. Um, uh, as an employee of an, uh, a company who um, is based on 55 Washington Street, an architecture office, we have more than 180 employees there. And I think for us, having Washington Street um, closed down and all of the facilities and all the cultural events that have been offered, especially during the pandemic, has been really appreciated um, from our workforce. I think it's not only, you know, having the possibility to bike to work and to be able to avoid the car tra traffic and the, and the overall vehicular traffic, but also being able to, to provide those one-on-one -on -one spaces outside the office within the city to get to know not only our coworkers, but also getting to know their local residents, the local business owners, and other people, tourists who are there in the region. So I think um, we've seen a lot of great uh, value and not only supporting our, our office, but we also try and give back to the community as well. Several times a week we order lunch for our employees and very often we'll go to local, locally owned businesses for that, you know, for that uh, purpose because we want them to be involved within you know, the local community of Dumbo. 
Um, so not only do I, I work there, but I'm also a resident nearby. So I just don't go there during the, the week, but I also try and go there during the weekends when the, all, there are these events that bid support and bid offers, which I have come to really enjoy during my, my years, and I know my coworkers have as well. Um, I think we're in a very unique position in Dumbo because of the Brooklyn Bridge Park, because of the connections, and because of all of the events that BID has you know, proposed and hopefully will continue to, to propose in the future. So clearly, I, I think I'm, I'm a supporter of, um, of the expanding budget for the, um, for the BID, and I just want to say, you know, I, I think whenever someone goes to Dumbo, they immediately understand the, the importance of the public <coughs> realm, the importance of the connection with the surrounding neighborhoods, and it's not just a tourist area, but it's, I think it's much more than that. And, um, and I think as a business, we hope that we're adding to that through our employees' involvement within the local community, but also integrating within the, within the neighbors there as well. I think Thank that's you. my time. Thank you. Now we have uh, Marilyn Danini. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you and good morning. Um, I'm here to, to, um, to speak in support of the bid. My name is Marilyn Danini and I work at St. Anne's Warehouse. St. Anne's is a nonprofit theater located in, at 45 Water Street in Dumbo. Um, since 2001, St. Anne's has been in Dumbo where we've transformed three different um, uh, industrial spaces into theatrical venues, first at 38 Water, then at 29J, and now we reside in the tobacco warehouse in Brooklyn Bridge Park, where we've been since 2015, and um, where we have a now a permanent home, which was um, partly built with support from the city. So thank you, city. So um, I must say that the bid has been a very good partner for St. Anne's. We, um, they've really helped us a lot. When we first came to Dumbo, it was very hard to build an audience down there. We have 50,000 people now who come to St. Anne's in a year. At, or in the early days, we had, we had very small audiences and people were really afraid to come in there. The streets were really lonely at night, it was very dark, and it was really like kind of a, like a daunting experience for those who were coming from Manhattan and other parts of Brooklyn. Um, when we came to Dumbo, the neighborhood was just getting going. And, but we saw that there was like gigantic potential there. And I think a lot of the, a lot of the growth has had to do with the, the support of the bid and the way that they've helped nonprofits and for-profit organizations like St. Anne's. There's like incredible features in Dumbo. There are cobblestone streets, there's great history, there's gorgeous architecture, and there's an amazing waterfront park, which has become an incredible destination for everybody. And St. Anne's in the last two years, or, or say the last two and a half years since the pandemic, has been able to use the park for programming, which has been an incredible benefit for our, for our audience and for the community. Um, anyway, so, so onward. Since there's tremendous growth in, in Dumbo, it's now become a, a, an incredible destination for New Yorkers and visitors alike. And, and I think that this, a lot of this growth is due to the bid because of what they, they provide. They provide safety, they provide cleanliness, they provide activities, and they provide marketing for organizations to be able to promote their work. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. Okay, so anyway, so I, I, I'm in favor of the bid, and thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have uh, testimony from some folks on Zoom. Mallory Kazdan. Marsha Hillis and Elisa Thomas. Your time will begin. Mallory, you there? I'm trying. It's not letting me um, go onto video. Am, am I audio only? That's fine. Go ahead. Your time will begin. Hi. Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Mallory Kasdan. I am the founder of the Dumbo Action Committee. Dan and Suzanne also spoke. Um, I've been in Dumbo for 19 years. Um, I came when, uh, yes, there were very few people down here. There was uh, a lot of wonderful artists doing wonderful work, uh, which I am a writer and I support that and always wanted to be around creative people, which is part of the reason my husband and I moved here. Uh, we started a family here. We sent our kids to local public schools. Uh, and I've been pretty active in the community um, mostly involving traffic and safety, which has been a problem down here for quite a long time. It's one of the motivators that led me to start the Dumbo Action Committee. 
Um, as the Dumbo Action Committee, I've worked alongside of the bid um, quite well for many years, and I do support a lot of what they have done for the community. However, I think we're dealing with an entirely different neighborhood, obviously, than uh, we had when I moved here in 2003. Uh, and as a, as a spokesperson, I guess, for residents, since I have a resident organization that represents 800 people, uh, I would just like to say, you know, the bid does do good work, but we really need them to step up with this additional funding to enforce some of the uh, chaos I think that Magdalena was referring to as a result of all the programming that they do. While the programming may be great for office workers and people that come in on the weekends, for residents, it's really a nightmare. And uh, we really need someone to acknowledge the reality of that. I mean, all these people testifying, they're wonderful, Dumbo is wonderful. Yes, I could find a lot of residents to also say Dumbo is a wonderful community. I was here during the pandemic. I supported local businesses. I spend a lot of time advocating on behalf of this community. And I just want to make sure that residents are actually heard in this process. It just doesn't seem right that residents are saying we need more accountability and the bid is not answering to that. And certainly the accountability and transparency of knowing where this money is going to go. So I would like to go on record saying we really would like to the see some clear. of this money going to enforcement of tourists, both cars and people, more sanitation and less programming because residents, I don't think, use the programming nearly as much as some of the other speakers here have intimated. Thank you. Thank you, Mallory. Uh, Marsha Hillis. Your time will begin. Hi. Um, so I'm zooming in from my phone. Um, I have been a Dumbo resident and artist here since 1989. And I'm just here to speak to re reiterate what Mallory said um, about transparency for the funding. Personally, I would like to see money going towards um, taking care of our street trees. As somebody who was one of the first people to work with the Parks Department to get trees planted in this neighborhood, um, our trees are not very well taken care of. If the, uh, more programming is not what our community needs, we do have vibrant um, programming that's provided by the bid. However, it does tip the balance. Um, it's it's uh, also keeping small businesses away from the neighborhood. Um, I've spoken to small business owners who discounted opening their businesses in Dumbo because they said, oh, that's just where tourists go. So there needs to be a balance. There does, we do need to have residential, purely residential um, membership and representation on the board. Thank you. Thank you, Marsha. Now we have Elisa Thomas. Hi, it's Elisa. Um, I echo uh, Mallory, Marsha, I think um, before David and um, I forgot who else spoke, but uh, as a resident, strictly as a resident who has lived here for a dozen years, um, there's been no accountability or transparency as to where this money is going. Um, I have deep concerns with the congestion, the traffic, the sanitation, our subway, the infrastructure, it doesn't support the actual residents as it is and adding even more tourists in without acknowledgement is really disconcerting. Um, the fact that there isn't any purely residential representation is also very disconcerting, uh, especially when, you know, the only people here who have actually spoken with numbers or people from the residents saying that, you know, there's a 68% increase in residents. No one's speaking within facts. It's all very, emotional because we love our neighborhood. We love our artists. That's why many of us came, moved here, bought property here. Um, so that putting that aside though, factually, there's never been any kind of accountability for how this is actually grown business. At what percentage, at what dollar for all of these people that we're bringing in and congesting and make, making the quality of life for residents here really difficult. We're already under so much stress just with the construction alone, the dust, the noise, the idea that many of us have had to you know, work from home because of the pandemic, having our water shut off during the day is not fun. Um, we're dealing with a lot of that stress on top of now saying, let's add more money, more programming, et cetera, when we really haven't gotten our, our stuff kind of organized as it is. So while I, I appreciate the bid very, very much, I appreciate many of the people who have testified here. I don't think that this is a matter of being pro or anti-bid. It's about 
having a voice as a resident and having that transparency. That's a lot of money to ask for without any kind of breakdown for where it's going and why. And there's been no acknowledgement thus the far on the safety um, and of, of us just walking in the sidewalk. It's kind of, I don't feel like people are really appreciating the, the neighborhood as it is, not as the luster that we want it to be and where it can be. Um, Thank so you. I, I think there needs to be a little, little you, bit Lisa. more reality Thank you. check and accountability. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna call the inimitable Billy Martin to call the roll. Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on finance. All items are coupled. Chair Brennan. I vote aye. Ayala. I vote aye. Thank you. Moya. I vote aye. Thank you. Powers. I vote aye. Lewis. Aye. Brooks Powers. Aye. Barron. I need to explain my vote. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Chair, this is just for the bids. Is it for that property tax exemption too? This is everything. This is everything. Okay, first, I'm voting no on the property tax exemption. Those are already in existence. It is not affordable at all. It's 207 units that are 95 to 115 percent of the AMI, and only 37 units are so-called affordable. So I'm voting no on that. I don't know what that means in tax exemption that it was going to get um, foreclosures and all of that. But and a project like that needs to be much more affordable. So that's a no. I'm really mixed. I have mixed feelings about this um, bid here. While my sister mentioned my name, that doesn't mean to get the vote right away, but thank you very much. And I do believe in you in your program, and I do believe that it should definitely be funded, and so to my artist brother as well. But I am concerned about what I'm hearing, you know, from the community, and I don't think that's a tall ask to say to be transparent. I don't think it's um, difficult to ask for transparency, so if it is going to pass, I know that, but at least we should pass it with the conditions with the concerns of those who say we want transparency, more residential involvement. So if we could at least do that, I think that should be heard. Just because it's a one or two or three people speaking against a project doesn't mean it's something that we should just rub a stamp and let it go forward without taking that into consideration. So I'm not gonna vote against it, but I am gonna get off a critical support that the, the vo voices of the unheard be heard, and that we do something, Mr. Chair, if you could write a letter or something uh, to the bid and say that we would like to see the transparency um, be real, and we would like to see more residential involvement. But with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Brewer. I won't. I, I do want to congratulate Barbara Askins, who is the head of the 125th Street bid, who's been a friend for a long time and is doing some very innovative policy on the 125th Street bid, but needs the extra funding to make them more effective. I vote I and congratulate her. Thank you. Farias. Um, I'd like to first disclose that um, in this vote, um, my sibling attends Castle Hill Middle School, and my parents is an employee at NYU Langone, and um, I vote aye on all. Hanks. Aye on all. Hudson. Uh, I vote aye on all and would like to disclose on the record that my domestic partner uh, is employed by Planned Parenthood Federation of America. Thank you. Kagan. I would like to disclose that my daughter is a CUNY college student for transparency resolution. Also, like after listening to all of these testimonies, I decided to abstain on Dumbo uh, increase and I vote aye on everything else. Councilmember Barron? Yes, I just want to disclose that my son works for Brick, Brooklyn, 
as a camera guy and want to <laughs> expose it on the record. Oh, say. Permission to quickly explain my vote. Yes. I uh, just wanted to thank Craig, right, for, for your testimony and the work that you do as an artist and also acknowledging how all these people moved to Brooklyn and New York City because of the art, uh, the artists that, that existed, most especially in Brooklyn. So uh, to hear your, you know, support for, for the bid, I, I vote all, I on all, uh, and especially the Dumbo bid. Thank you for your testimony. Sanchez. I'd like to disclose on the record that uh, my sibling uh, works at CUNY BMCC and I put I on all. Thank you. Velasquez. I'd like to disclose on the record, uh, my brother is part of Samaritans, on the board of Samaritans and my husband um, is at DEP and I vote I on all. One. I on all. Car. I'd like to disclose on the record that my spouse is a student at CUNY and we are funding CUNY in the transparency resolution and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Result of tallies with Committee on Finance. We have introduction 789 adopted by the committee with 16 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention. Preconsidered resolution adopted by the committee 17 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, no abstentions and land use item 147 adopted by the committee with 16 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. That is a full committee, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Billy. I wanna give any members who still haven't given um, disclosure, Sylvina? I just wanna disclose I'm a member of the Greater Allen AME Cathedral and we are um, voting to fund one of the community-based programming. Good, okay, with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody.